Yeah. What up, dudes? Yo. What's happening, man? Man, what I'm excited about is continuing to have Stephen Heptig on. Uh, he recently did a podcast with his mom on his mom's podcast about financial independence. Amazing. Go give it a listen. Incredible uh, interview. Steve, uh, Stephen did a great job. But what I love is that I kind of saw that it also as like a almost like an interview, right? Like an honor interview, not an interview, you know, an obvious interview from the podcast code, but for an interview for a future co-host, because we've been looking collectively at trying to get Stu off, off the podcast for a while now. And I think Steven is uh, absolutely phenomenal. And so I think there's a very natural, uh, Stu, I'm curious on your thoughts, but very you're natural- going to bring this you're going to bring this while we're recording for an episode? Oh, dude, I I assumed it was a natural outflow of your thought process too. This is not uh, no. now it's awkward. Now yeah. it's totally awkward. Dude. Am I interviewing for a new work wife? Hmm. <laughs> so I, I you know, to all our guests, I'm so sorry for this awkward silence and and topic. I I Stu, I apologize. I totally thought we were on the same page. We didn't talk about it, but I thought no, man, on the same page. I, I I love doing the podcast. That I I want to continue to do the podcast. Oh oh yeah. So um, wow. Well, I love you, and oh, uh, yeah. hopefully this doesn't come between uh, us and episode two sixty whatever uh, we're on. Or I don't even, I don't even know what we're on. I don't. I don't because that's that's. that's do you even like listen to our you podcast? Also... Do you like listen to our episodes love after it. they air? No, because your voice drives me crazy. <laughs> I'm totally joking. I'm totally joking. I do. I, Steven, I, do you I listen to our podcast? Uh, yes, but on 2X so that it minimizes the time I have to listen to your voices. Yeah. Well, and and one omission that Stu, I'm sorry, that Steven did, he forgot to mention that the Connect Man podcast was one of his favorite resources at the end of his uh, current interview. And we forgive him for that. And it's fine because it, 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 I'll it mention would have been it in here. context. The Kinetic Man is one of my favorite podcasts, and you should check it out. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. It's good. Hey, uh, before we get into the topic that we're going to discuss, which is community, and uh, in community, at least for me, inherent in community is laughter, um, which is why I love Stu because there's lots of laughter, usually one directional. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm just curious. You guys are both dads. Uh, we often talk about modeling. Right. We, we, as fathers model what ideally what, what our values are and what right looks like, at least in the context of our family. And, um, I'm curious if you guys, uh, so my kids had, had come home and they're, they're doing all this, your mom stuff, right? Like, yeah, mom. And they say it like that. And it's, it's ridiculous, but I have noticed now that I'm conscious of it, <laughs> how often like my kids would be like, Hey dad, are we going to, what's for dinner? And I'm like, Oh or not what's for dinner, but like what, uh, you know, who, who's making dinner? I'm like, Joe, I'm like, is that who's Joe? I'm like, Joe mama or, or like things, you know, the Joe mama jokes or your mom. It, I've noticed how much I model that behavior for my children. And I'm just trying to analyze, should I be judging myself, myself harshly or is it cool? Is it appropriate? Is it funny? I think you should judge yourself harshly. I mean, I think you're terrible. Mm. That's just a terrible thing to do as a father. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I, Steve, I don't if, ever do anything like that. If you're asking whether or not acting like an adolescent child is out of character for you, I would say mm -hmm. no. No. So, no, that's not the question. That's not the question. No, that that is not <laughs> that is not obvious. The question is, is it, is it inappropriate within the context of leading my household as a grown adolescent child it's it's an important question we don't have to answer it here i don't want to i don't want to take i'll tell you but, but i'll Stu, tell you that i'll tell you that judge. my wife oh, no i'm not judging I'll tell because you my wife gets farts mad that at me in your house my wife gets mad at me uh daily uh for for things that i do i don't do your mama jokes but uh i fart yeah a lot, a lot. uh i pick my nose still as a 43 year old man wow um I know sometimes you I, guys. You guys mentioned real. Bluey the other day, which I will admit here uh, to everyone that Bluey is one of my favorite TV shows. Dude, I love Bluey. It's it's amazing. But there was an episode recently that was all about farting, and um, it showed a little clip of like uh, the dad saying, "Pull my finger in an elevator," and the rest <laughs> of the family being horrified, which <laughs> did make me laugh quite a lot. 
I'm oh. I'm getting pretty bad because I now I, I fart in front of my neighbor's kids too. And <laughs> oh, dude, the, my neighbor's don't, kids don't think call it's me. hilarious. Don't but, call uh, me until the memory you create for uh, an inner family gathering is you lighting a fart on fire. Lighting okay? a fart on fire. Yeah. yeah. I haven't done that. that. Is something, I have not gone that. Is that something far. that my, my friend's kids are like, dude, and, and there's teenagers in there that are like, dude, can you do that again? Like when we see them now, speaking, now, of, the speaking reason, of family gatherings, family gatherings, but the reason we bring this up one, we're getting real, real talk, but, but like why, you know, it, it, it's interesting that we, a lot of conversations we're having within the mastermind is, is very much around real being real right and steven's gonna share a story that i'm like wow dude like let's analyze let's seriously consider from a very real perspective if we are these people and why we're these people because it, it when you when you hear when you talk about these things the reality sometimes sounds so ridiculous that it's hard to believe that it's real but it's like wow that that is that is what we do you know, as, 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 as men and, and the reasons, by one of the things we dig into in the mastermind is like, why let, let's, let's be very intentional with what we do. And let's ask very difficult questions on why we do the things that we currently do. We are, we're just talking intimacy with, with uh, one of the tribes. I'm like, look guys, assess it. If it's there, it's there and, and assess it, be honest with yourself. Step one, be honest and then you get to choose, you have to choose, is it important for enough for you to do something about? Is it important enough for you to action? Is community, we talk about community, is knowing your neighbor something truly important to you? Like I, I love when new people move in, being a guy or the family that that takes cookies over there or whatever, right? Going over to the neighbor and, and, and being like, hey, I just met a new neighbor uh, the other day. And, and I don't know if people are going over and introducing themselves to them, right? But- but that's what we, we, you know, we talk about community and the reality of community. Everybody, I'm, I'm pretty sure most people you ask, Hey, is community important to you? They're going to be like, yeah. Oh, cool. Do you know your neighbors? No, no clue. Why would I know? <laughs> well, well, there's a, there's a dichotomy there. Right. And so, so we, this very interesting conversation about community, um, it comes up often and, and it was really one of the founding principles of why we even started this mastermind. Because we were seeing dudes in particular not living in community. And it's just a very, very interesting and, and extremely sad condition that we can that we currently find ourselves in. Yeah, I had um I had an interesting example of that the other day. I you know, one of the things we talk about here with our our men is we've used ex- this example several times. Like you're the dad standing on the playground and there's every other dad standing on the playground each of you hoping that uh you find more friends but uh nobody going over and talking about it and you sometimes you just have to be the one to do that and so my wife and i had this conversation recently where we acknowledged like we don't have as many friends that are are local to us anymore that as we want we we need to build that and it's easy to just be like well okay great uh, let's move on with life but I, I, the other day I said, no, like, we're, let's, let's make a, let's do something about this. So we recently moved into our new house. We've lived here about a year and a half. Both of our neighbors, we are so blessed. Both of our neighbors are amazing, but they sort of keep to themselves. One of them is like uh, my parents age. And then on the other side is a couple that's a little bit older. They're probably 10 years older than I am. And they have kids that are like early college and they're, they're twenties and late teens. <clears throat> so I love to smoke, so I was cooking a pork shoulder. If you uh, smoke pulled pork, you know that uh, they're they come in these huge amounts, right? And so, um, love me some Costco uh, pork butt, and yelled over the fence the other day. I was like, "Hey, um, do you guys want to come have dinner with us Saturday night? We're going to smoke this pork butt." And to my surprise, they actually said yes because they've turned us down several times. I was like, "Oh, sweet!" So woke up early that morning, threw the the pork shoulder on. And the other side neighbor, right, he also smokes. And so I texted him and I was like, man, I thought to myself, I don't want him to, to feel left out. I don't want him to see us having dinner with our neighbors tonight and feel left out. So I said, hey, you guys should come over and join us tonight. Long story short, he couldn't. His wife was working, but he said uh, he knew that I, I love to enjoy a, a little sip of whiskey once in a while. So he said, I'll come over later tonight. So we're sitting out and it's like 830. And uh, the uh, the older couple, they're sitting there. We've been there for a couple of hours, had an amazing dinner and like really enjoyed our time together. And um, the, the guy on the other side comes over 
And he was like, oh, hey, I've seen you guys a bunch, but I don't think we've ever met. And he introduced himself. And they had to, like, introduce themselves and tell their names. And he sort of went around the table. And, you know, an hour later, everyone's gone. And I was in the kitchen with my wife. And I was like, did it shock you that they have lived one house down from each other for probably 10 years and have never met? And what was possibly equally shocking to me was I expected my wife's response to be like, I know, right? And it was like, no, why would why would you know somebody on the other side? And I was like, all right, all right. This is this is like the this is the American way, right? Like you have to make an effort to go out and knock on your neighbor's doors and and bring the community together. Like you gotta be that nucleus. You gotta be the weird one. So we were the weird one. Isn't that crazy? Like you're the weird one for trying to get to know the people that you live next to for, you know, possibly 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, if you never move again. Yeah. Like, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder why, why that is. I wonder what, what has happened to our, our society to, to create this. I, I don't know. Goody, do you, do you have any ideas on it? Yeah. Lots of ideas. Yeah, um, <laughs> Well, if you think about um, where we are with respect to truth uh, in today's society, right? And this idea of truth in, in an environment full of fake news and, and this bipolar uh, or this polarization of everything, literally everything. You cannot, you, we cannot agree on these things. And a lot of that is driven by this idea of independence and being, you know, that I live in this world and I, in, in this world is me, like it is about me, right? This is a conversation I'm having every day with the, the kids at football. I'm like, Hey, every time you miss practice, uh, guess who suffers your team. You're not important anymore. Every time you miss your block because you lack effort, guess who suffers? Your quarterback suffers because you're not blocking because you don't want to run. You don't deserve to play. It's not about you. Like I'm having these conversations with kids every, every single day. And, and it's, it's interesting because I think we are, we believe so many of these lies in general, the truth is so, is so, um, it, it just so evasive and doesn't have to be, um, that we are now that the actions that we do and the culture that we've created are, are such that people are not shocked that you don't know someone that lives two doors down from you. Like I, I can't, and, and it's, it's interesting because in like, I can also, I'm not surprised by that in, in that 10 years, that's pretty excessive. Like that to me, like how do you not cross paths at some point uh, in 10 years? Like, I just don't, I don't understand that. But again, I'm also like, if you happen to be taking the trash out in a one block radius at the same time I am, there's a very good chance. Like I'm going to go like, be like, Hey dude, do you want to talk? You want to be friends? You want to, you know, you know, like, let's talk or I'll, be friends literally, with me? I'll see somebody walking outside my house. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Phil, if you're listening, when, when him and when he, him and his family walk by, like I will, if I see them, I will, I will drop what I'm doing and I'll go out. You know, it's funny. We did this kitchen renovation and we took a big hole out of the wall and now you can see from the kitchen all the way out to the, to the street. I honestly think that appealed to me so much because I was like, man, I don't, I just don't want to miss out. What if somebody's out there? Like, what if somebody wants to play? Like, I don't want to miss, I don't want to miss. He's like, like watching through the blinds yeah. from inside yeah. his house to yeah. see who's walking by. Like waiting the for lights off to come so out to like jump out and give him a hug. Yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't, even, you guys were outside too. Oh wow. I didn't even know. <laughs> but, but, but I guess the, the, the point is, is that we have believed so many of these lies that we also believe this, the, this fundamental thing that I, I believe human existence is that we were born to be in community and, and John Mark Comer, we love John Mark Comer. Uh, and, and what I love about him as well is that he's very self-aware. He's like, dude, I'm like, I'm pegged introvert, like the most introverted dude. And he, and he says, but I acknowledge that I was created for community. I have to, fight some of my personality things to be in community. And I love it. Every time I do it, I love it. Right. And, and so, you know, this idea that we don't need other people is, is absolutely crazy to me. And, and, and that it's not enjoyable is, is crazy to me. I've had the same conversation uh, probably four times this week where I said, Hey dude, um, the kinetic man is a tribe of men. We come together. We're vulnerable. We're honest. We're a community, right? We're a community. 
And I told each of these guys, I was like, your wife does not want to be your, your everything. Like she wants to be your wife. She doesn't want to be your wife, your fishing partner, your bowling buddy, and your best friend. Like, yeah, yeah, it's super romantic. Hollywood loves, oh, you're my best friend and I love you. And you're, oh, okay, yeah, that's great. Like, go find you, some dude you friends. You complete me. Go find some dude friends, right? Like, your wife does not want to be that. She she cannot literally be the mother and have her own friends and also be there for you. And they're better at it. The women are better at it than we are. She, she, you, you should not be looking at her. And all the dudes are like, oh, yeah, that's true. Cause like, cause they all expect their wife to be that, that person for them. Like, I do not. I didn't invite my wife on our hike tomorrow, right? If she's not invited, um, not because I don't love her, but, but I don't, there's dude things that like, there's no women invited to this thing. It's a bunch of dudes, a kinetic man get together, go climb a mountain. That's important. It's powerful and it's truth and it's life giving. But because we believe this idea that I don't need dudes in my life to talk about serious things like my marriage and my struggles and my insecurities and my my porn addiction and my uh, beating my kids and all these things, right? Because I feel like like I can't share those things. Well, I'm just gonna bottle it all up, and it would that, that dude don't drop all that on your wife, right? Like there there are other outlets that you should seek, and you can't do it on your own. And, and by the way. There's probably a bunch of dudes out there that also have significant insecurities that also are wearing a bunch of masks that also have a porn addiction that also beat their kids and they don't want to be that guy. They don't want to be that guy. And so you surround yourself with a bunch of dudes who want to be better. And guess what happens? You get better, right? You talk about things. Nobody wants to be lonely, dude. Nobody wants to be, have no friends. Nobody. Yeah, And so why do we act like we do? That's a lie. I think it's a lie from hell, dude. I, I do. I think it's a totally. lie that, that causes us to be so much less than we can be because we don't have the beauty of those relationships and the beauty of that connection and that community and that tribe. You know, we, we talk a lot about, and I think it's, it's cliched, right? That, um, you, as a man should, should lead your family. Right. But I think what is not common is men leading their family to friendships, men leading their family to fun. Right. I think that we tend to rely on, and this is just anecdotally myself and, and men around me, right? Like you tend to re rely sort of on the relationships. Once you have kids, the relationships that your wife builds, which are typically correlated with the friends that your kids are hanging out with, right? Versus, um, cause I'll tell you like my wife, um, she allowed me to plan a dinner for Saturday night, but had I left the binary choice in her hands, it probably would have been like, eh, let's, let's just pass on that. Like, let's have a little bit easier night. Um, even though we both have acknowledged that we we want to build more relationships around us and the community around us, like on the street we live on. And so I think that uh, that's something else too. Like you're as a man, like you might have to be the weird one of the people around you, but you also might have to be the weird one in your family. Even if you are both introverted and say like, all right, let's go. Like, let's see, let's see who wants to have dinner together. Let's just make a community. Let's build it. it it's a great point. I'll tell you that uh, one of the, um, barriers, at least in my household is, um, you know, the, the desire to have a cleanly home, right. You know, everything's clean, everything's put away. There's, you know, kids toys aren't everywhere. Uh, we have to plan in advance and clean the house, you know, to its fullest. And, and I was recently, I finished this book called habits of the house habits of the household by Justin Whitmer early. And he talks about hospitality and that's something that, that Jesus calls us to do is be hospitable. And, there's a big difference between hospitality and entertaining mm. hospitality. Interesting. Like you're bringing people into your life. Right. And it's real. Just like you talked about David, like we're being real. It's, it's being open. It's being vulnerable. Yeah. Our house is a mess. We have kids. This is, this is our life. Um, but we're inviting you to come be a part of it. Right. That's and which one is real. Right. Like which, which one's, one's real? real. Right. Right. Like, like, we do don't... you want to know me or do you want to know my Facebook version of me? Do you want to know me or do you want to know my cleanest version where I spent all day long cleaning the house so you could come over and I can give you, you know, gold plated dishes. Like that's, that's entertaining. Dang, gold yeah, plated we don't, dishes? we don't have gold plated okay, dishes, baller. but like there's a huge <laughs> okay. difference. <laughs> there's a huge difference between hospitality and entertaining. And I think a lot of us, 
just think in this world of, of entertaining all the time. And, and that's not real. That's not real life. Well, dude, and I find it interesting, uh, you know, when you talk about, when you go look for a new house and you ask anybody, what, what is it? What is, what does everybody say? Oh, I want an open concept. Open because concept. Why? Because why? So we can have people over. So we can have people over. Everybody says that dude, like everybody has this vision. And my wife is so good at, at calling these things out. Like she, she's, I'm like, well, honey, we need, we need a bigger car. Like, and, you know, so that the family, so my parents can fit too. When we go on this camping trip, she's like, dude, that's like twice a year. You're going to buy a car, for, buy a car for the 363 days a year, not the 360, you know, not the, not the two days of the year that, that you're going to need that. But the same is true for a house. Right. And, and she, you know, for us, we, we do love entertaining. We love, and we love, um, hospitality and we love having people over and, and sometimes it's just messy and it is what it is, but, but that's not the point. Nobody cares. Everybody's house is messy, dude. If you, if you're at the stage of our of life that we are, and you have the number of kids we have, and you're bringing those kids over to play, like they're going to ruin the house anyways. So why clean it? But like their house looks the same. So just like, is it about that? You know, so I love how you say that, but, but, I, but the idea, the delusion that folks, and it's not, it's not a delusion to, to point out a negative thing. Everybody wants to have this house to have people over. That should tell you immediately where people's hearts are naturally inclined. I want to be around people, but then all the filters get added on top of it. You buy that house, open concept, beautiful. It would be great for entertaining and having people and being social. And you never invite anybody to your house. Because all the other filters, all the other lies get stacked on top of that. But you bought this house because one of the primary things you said, everybody says it, even the introverts, man, I just want this open concept so I can have, you know, a bunch of people and you never invite people. It's all the other lies. And so the intentionality behind it, right? That's what I love. Let's get to the root of the truth. Let's get to the root of the truth or let's get to the root and let's get to the truth and then do something about it do something about it change that that just in your own household in your own world in your own neighborhood in your own community just change it do what steven did right and costco i don't know what you dude they always sell two man and you can only cook one like dude, they come in a double pack and the other day they were six dollars like, off that's why it's crazy i got one in the yeah. freezer right now i'm gonna invite that's some more people over make some more pulled pork right Oof, and, man we made that pulled pork and just some enchiladas too oh chef's kiss oh dude so I'm not going to lie. I took it and then I also uh, pan fried it for some carnitas, yes. mm. dude. And we bagged mm. it up to get camping and we wanted some people like, oh, we'll take care of our own food. And they saw us cooking the carnitas stuff on our little fire and like, they're like, hey, maybe mind. next time we'll, uh, we'll, uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, not important. But again, the community part of that, right? The camping, we went with other people, like the camping's big for us. We, we love camping, but we've noticed um, for the kids and for our sanity, it's so much more fun to go with other families. It just is. It just is. Like you get a group of families that go out into the woods. It's amazing. Amazing. And so bottom line, what, what do you, are you intentional? Do you know, do you know, like, are you one of those home buyers? I want to, I want to buy a house to have people over and I've never invited anybody over. Do something about that, right? Like question that. Like, why is that? Why was that important to me when I was looking at this house? Why did that, why did that even come out of my mouth? address those desires. And, and you know what? Step out and create, especially men, like just step out and be comfortable in your own skin. And just, it's okay. Some guys are going to initially reject you uh, because they're not secure enough in their own manlyhood and manliness to, to be able to be like, yeah, dude, I want friends too. And, and you seem like a cool guy. Right. But typically what happens, Steven, what typically happens, right? Hey, you want to come over? I'd love to come over. Sounds yeah. great. Sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, me too. Right. And then, and then just, just do that. Just do it. Do something about it. Go make a friend. We talk about this all the time, join a community and be different, be better, be intentional and, and, and look for that community because it is so much more fulfilling to live in community than it is, you know, by herself bugging your wife because, you know, she's annoyed that you want to bring every single topic to her. Like go find a friend in your own hermetically sealed bubble. Exactly. <laughs> hey, let's leave this. Let's leave this episode with the kinetic man challenge. We, we, we gave a kinetic man challenge to, to our tribe, uh, our members. Um, but, but here it is. Go, go talk to your neighbor. Like if you don't know a neighbor on your street or your cul-de-sac, 
go talk to them, introduce yourself, say hello, and then invite them to dinner. Bring a neighbor over. Let's practice some hospitality. It's not Break entertaining. Some Break some bread. Um, go take uncommon action. Seriously, clean your house up because you guys are nasty. Clean your house first. I'm just kidding. On natural. Mm. I've seen your house. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. All right, men. Go be men. Let's not be sideline men. Let's be kinetic men. Do it. Take the challenge. And I challenge you to do something else. Just go to the website. Go to theconnectman.com. Take a look at some of our resources. Take a look at some of our books. Take a look at some of our testimonials. Join our group. You know, whatever it is, look for it. it I encourage you, start there. Look for a community. Start at ours. If our community is not right for you, that's awesome. We'll never know. We don't We don't care. It's, it's great. Find the right community. Go plug in. Do something. Be kinetic, man. Be different. Be better. Let's go. Giddy up. See you.